Thanks for joining us again as we continue our study with James Luce and the men's ministry at Glenville Church. Feel free to join us as well on Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. We'd love to have you. If you'd like to check out some other teachings here on the YouTube channel for Glenville Teachings, we have Brenda Lane, Bruce Thomas, and several other teachers. So look for some new teachings coming your way and subscribe to our channel. May the Lord bless you and keep you as you continue to grow in His grace. So uh, we're going to take a little break this week from uh, the middle of our Paul study. And uh, I know some of you have probably done this before, but um, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do two pieces today and try to do, go through them really fast. And then I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get uh, Justin to go ahead and post these PDFs, uh, you know, where we're posting this this audio and stuff, uh, attachment to it. So um, we've had some people, you know, uh, coming and going, and we've had some people that are trying to figure out where they should be kind of thing, and uh, I, it just happened to be the right time to say, you know what, we need to do uh, these two things. So uh, discovering your spiritual gifts and spiritual growth assessment process is the two things that we want to work on today. And we're just going to go through the points of, <clears throat> and these things are nice, Lifeway Church uh, put them together, and they, they, they really kind of structure out trying to figure out who you're supposed to be. So uh, we're just going to go through this as, as quickly as we can to try to understand who we are and then where we should be developing and growing and those kind of things. And uh, Kurt and I last week when we were in here by ourselves, we're just kind of discussing where the church is and where we are and those kind of things. And it's like, well, let's really figure out where we are. You know, um, I can't remember what... Uh, a motivational speaker, but he's a famous millionaire kind of guy, and he was talking about um, you can't possibly hit your mark if you don't know where your mark is, right? He said if you're a if you're a uh, world class Olympian, I bet anybody in this room can outshoot this world class Olympian. Well, well, yeah, that's not going to happen. He goes, yeah, it is, and he put a blindfold on the world class Olympian. He said, if you don't know where the goal is, doesn't matter how good you are shooting. You have no goal. And then he, he added to it, if you don't know where you are, you also cannot hit the goal. Because mm -hmm. you have no way to evaluate how to get there if you don't know what you have to do to get there. So uh, I, fi I figured with starting, I actually was really up in the air about whether or not to do the discovery of the spiritual gifts one, because the other one was what I was really wanting. But reality-wise, it's if... If you're made to do certain things, you know, you already have that inclination. God has designed you a certain way to, to fulfill certain things. Then you need to know that. And uh, it's good to start with that kind of uh, uh, evaluation. So um, a spiritual gift is an expression of the Holy Spirit in the life of believers, which empowers them to serve the body of Christ and the church. And so um, there's several verses here that, uh, that pertain to that. So I'm just going to go through. And maybe have each of us kind of read a few of them. Um, leadership is one of the spiritual gifts. Leadership aids the body by leading and directing members to accomplish the goals and purpose of the church. Leadership motivates people to work together in unity toward common goals. And that verse came from Romans 12, 8. And it is, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberal, uh, liberal, liberal, liberality, he who leads with diligence. He who leads with diligence. And I think that is a, uh, that, that's really where it comes from with, with me of when I want to waffle and I want to fall aside and not do the class, or not show up, not be on the camera, not do what I'm supposed to do. It's, I, I'm, I don't have a choice. I mean, I do, but I picked the cross up. I should do what, I'm going to be diligent and do what I'm supposed to do. Because if I don't, who am I? I have no, you know, I'm, I'm just that wall. There's no diligence there. Administration. Persons with the gift of administration lead the body by steering others to remain on task. Administration enables the body to organize according to God's given purpose and long-term goals. Um, you know, Kurt, look up the verses for teaching. So that way I'm not taking this go down through slow. All of them? Yeah. Just kind of mark them with your finger, because that way, if, if anybody has the one for administration, I should have marked these. <laughs> Actually, that's 
That's the first one in teaching. I can do that when I'm there. Okay. Uh, first Corinthians twelve twenty eight. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. All right. So that covers several of them that, that are going to go down this list. Um, teaching, teaching and instructing members in the truth and doctrines of God's word for the purpose of building up, unifying, and maturing the body. Um, and Romans 12, I was just at Romans, so I should have just kept that one. 12, 7. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering, he who teaches in teaching. And then Ephesians 4, 11, which is where we were going. I got it. Yep. Okay. Oh, wait, where'd it go? <laughs> Did I miss something? Hang on. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong numbers. Okay. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry. For yeah. Building up the body of Christ. Knowledge, the gift of knowledge, manifests itself in teaching and training and discipleship. It is the God-given ability to learn, know, and explain the precious truth of God's word. A word of knowledge is a spirit-revealed truth. Wisdom is the gift that discerns the work of the Holy Spirit in the body and applies his teaching and actions to the needs of the body. Prophecy, the gift of prophecy, is proclaiming the word of God boldly. Uh, this builds up the body and leads to conviction of sin. Prophecy manifests itself in preaching and teaching. You know, what's funny is, is I, uh, I never thought of myself as one who had that gift. And then I, I, I have people come to me after class and tell me, man, I've never heard how Jesus is like cool and strong. And, and it's like, <laughs> is that, is that what that is? I, so I'm going to be interested in, in the evaluation today to see if it's different than I remembered it. Cause I haven't done this evaluation in a long time. I mean, the, I, and it might not even be the same one. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so I think we have a new one in that one. Do we have a new one in that one? We have Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians. Anybody got that? Three? Yep. Uh, you got it there? Yeah, sure, I'll go. Um, he gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophecy. He gives someone else the ability to dis discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. Yeah. And then Romans 12, 6. Having then gifts different according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophecy in proportion to our faith. Or minister, let us, and it's the rest of the ones that we've already read. Um, discernment aids the body by recognizing the true intention of those within or related to the body. Discernment tests the message and actions of others for the protection and the well-being of the body. Exhortation. Possessors of this gift encourage members to be involved in and enthusiastic about the work of the Lord. Members with this gift are good counselors and motivate others to service. Exhortation exhibits itself in preaching, teaching, and ministry. Which is kind of funny because I know I'm not that great at, at motivating people or counseling them. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's cool that those are so close for prophecy and exhortation, but it's not my thing. It's, hope you do well today. <laughs> yeah, I never really considered myself to be tremendously encouraging since I'm so incredibly fatalistic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it seems I helped a lot of people. When we I need to get some, somebody like that in this class. we got to get somebody like that in this class. <laughs> <laughs> shepherding. The gift of shepherding is manifest in, in persons who look out for the spiritual welfare of others. Although pastors like shepherds do care for the members of the church, this gift is not limited to the pastor or the staff members. Okay, that's Ephesians 4. Let's jump over there. I need to get those little things because my Bible's so thick that it's... I'm there. You're there? Okay. Ephesians 4, 11. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up... The body of Christ. We did that one. We did that one already. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, what's funny is I didn't remember shepherding was in there. And the shepherds was a separate in there. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> faith. Faith trusts God to work beyond the human capabilities of the people. Believers with this gift encourage others to trust in God in the face of apparently insurmountable odds. 
um, 12 9. The same spirit gives great faith to another and to someone else. The one spirit gives the gift of healing. Wow. And see, with my uh, my wife is the faith, always. I'll, I'll be in a desperation or I'll be in a moment of, of why did that happen? Because God is awesome. God's figuring this out. Stop being like that. It's, how can you just have that childlike faith? And she does. And it's all the time. Hate it. <laughs> it's so positive. God gifts his church with the evangelists to lead others to Christ effectively and enthusiastically. This gift builds up the body by adding new members to its fellowship. Um, okay. Apostleship. Uh, the church spends, uh, sends apostles from the body to plant churches to be missionaries. Apostles motivate the, the body to look beyond its walls in order to carry out the Great Commission. Service helps. Those with the gift of service helps recognize practical needs in the body and joyfully give assistance to meeting those needs. Christians with this gift do not mind working behind the scenes. And that uh, that last thing I think is the most important part of that to me is Christians with this gift do not mind working behind the scenes because there's so much of the I want recognition for what I'm doing that you're you, you, it that. I think poisons the community because it's if that's what you're about then how are you about freely giving mm -hmm. you know yeah. um, it's about self and it's not about service right Ver Vernon when he does his prayer ministry out there he does it way before service and goes chair to chair and doesn't do it so people see him doing it you know and he has recognition for it and people do see him doing but it's not, hey, everybody, I'm praying on this chair, you know. And that matters so much more to me than if somebody was there doing every chair, you know, and making a point of it. Mm. I mean, both could be 100% genuine. But, you know, if you're in it for the, the little award at the end, well, not the award at the end, the crown in heaven, but if you're into it for the uh, the award of people seeing you do it, I, I just don't put as much stock in that. And... Um, you know, um, trying to motivate people to run the camera, right? I haven't even really tried lately. And uh, that, that was another thing that came up in my mind when I was, I was looking at doing this. You know, why haven't I done that lately? You know, it's been a long time since I've even tried. And part of that was I don't need to be doing something else. I might as well be running the camera kind of thing. And I'll, I'm willing to run the camera, and I'm okay with it. It's behind the scenes, and it's no big deal. What am I doing not calling other people to try to do something else and to help do something? I'm, I'm, I'm creating a void of an opportunity for somebody to serve who might want to serve. I haven't even asked lately. Yeah. Um, I think you basically just said exactly what I was thinking about, but uh, one complaint I've heard on occasion is uh, uh, sometimes people don't feel like they have a place in the place that they're supposed to, that they're good at. And um, uh, I'm like, well, did you ask yeah. if, if you could do it? And uh, people have trouble asking for things. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I don't like asking for things, um, it, especially a position, something important. I don't yeah. like to ask for something important. I'll ask them, hey, can you hand me that hammer? <laughs> <You know? laughs> it was like, uh, hey, can I teach class <laughs> or something like that? You know, I, I have terrible trouble trying to ask for that thing and, and uh, uh, inviting people to do that, being like, hey, if anyone's interested in this, come see me after whatever, because right. uh, you're in. All you got to do is raise your hand and have thumbs. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, mm. Well, and at, at one point, I had a couple people that were on the camera and running the camera. And I, I actually, I feel like I did not, because I'm not the, the uh, exhortation guy, I didn't manage it well to help them feel like they were appreciated for doing what they should be doing. You know, it, it is an act of service to God and helping the service, but at the same time, you know, you're, thank you for making it so I don't have to do this every week. 
you know, and I, I think I said that a few times, but I, you know, James, stretch yourself a little, make it a little better that you recognize that this guy does it all the time, because Nathan and Scott did it all the time, you know, you know, I, I did every third week kind of thing, and then if I was on praise team or on drama, I couldn't do it that week, so they got stuck doing it more so, so, and, uh, wanting to be just more part of his service is is nothing against them for not wanting to do the camera anymore. It's kind of that everyone can rotate and shift around and we have plenty of people who could do it. So why have I for the last two years decided arbitrarily I'll just do it. I've I've taken an opportunity for somebody who might have wanted to serve like you know and and made it so that they didn't get a chance to. Um, well I don't know if it's exactly the same thing. But, um, you know, when I was on the uh, worship ministry, I mean, I was on the worship ministry for like five years, solid every week, you know, right, um, and all that. And it, it can be difficult to kind of, I guess, not really recognize, but let go of something because really where you're serving can actually change. You know yeah. what God's calling you to do and stuff like that. So and reevaluate um, it. Right, right. Um, and it kind of opened my eyes a little bit because that change was kind of happening. You know, and I'm like, you know, kind of very comfortable in what I'm doing. You know, and stuff like that. But I mean, God is actually working in me. I'm, I'm kind of not necessarily feeling the the drive, the motivation to actually, you know, actually enjoying it as much as I used to mm -hmm. and some things like that. Um, and it really, it probably took a good month to say, hey, look, I'm, I'm trying I'm to make opportunities for other people, yeah. you know, to serve in this manner. I will take care of it, you know. So, I mean, it's not me actually going out and saying, you know, you know come in and, you know, yeah. and do that. But me just kind of recognizing what the situation is and stepping aside so God can do his work. Yeah. So, yeah. And in the worship ministry right now, I think the general feeling among us all is that uh, there's no one out there that really wants to do it. We, we know of a few people that, 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 uh, that play, <clears throat> but, and we're, we're like, Hey, we, we'd like you to, to come play. And we're like, oh, yeah, maybe. And they're never like, Oh yeah. How about next week? <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, or you know, there's no like, hey, come on. Uh, there, but there's only a few people. Uh, there hasn't been a blanket invitation, as far as I'm, I'm aware, at least not for a while. Like, hey, if anyone wants to be on the worship ministry, you know, meet over here for five minutes after service or something. Yeah. You know, but uh, but the opportunity is there. If someone wants to serve in the worship ministry, it's like we're we're all about more people. <laughs> you yeah. know, if it got on a rotation, or you know, if someone would feel more comfortable like doing something with youth or kids or something like that I think there's a there's a desire within us as the musicians to sort of expand that yeah and, and, and bring more people in but we just haven't really seen a lot of you know co commitments to wanting to actually do that yeah interesting because I remember when when I was at that point I mean it seemed like everybody was just like Swarming to it. That's what they, you know, wanted to do. You yeah. know, and so it was kind of like clear to me that well, I'm not quite feeling it. Well, anymore, you had so yeah, Joey, Justin, yeah. the Bell Brothers, <laughs> Kelly Wheeler, yeah, and that in that transition time, they all wanted to be on that stage playing guitar. Yeah, every one of those guys. Wow. Yeah, and it was so strange too because it's like, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna do a round robin? Or are we gonna do you know? <laughs> And what's funny is that that's what Justin tries to do with the, the praise singers because we have a lot of people who want to sing. But yeah. somebody that actually has the ability to play guitar well, and it might be kind of that weird thing too of, well, do you expect me to do what Bryson's doing over there? <laughs> you know, because I can't bow my electric. I mean, I can maybe. <laughs> Bryson is just like, like, Justin gives him free reign to do whatever he wants. And Bryson's over there doing the things that he wants to do and, and you know, more often than not, we're just like that. Yeah, that's good. Keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know there's, there's rarely any sort of 
uh, why don't you try something like this? Because, you know, he can, he can hang just fine. You know, that, you know, I'm bouncing around between instruments. The only thing I haven't played yet is drums. I'm capable, but there's usually someone who wants to. Who enjoys. My, <laughs> <laughs> who actually wants to do it. Yeah. You know, it's like, they, they're bouncing me around. You know, we want some more drummers in the rotation. Like, genuine drummers. Yeah. You know, uh, Bryson's playing drums this week. Tyler, Tyler plays drums a lot because Raj is the only drummer. Drummer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then he can't be here every week. Well, Rick said you really wanted to step up for drumming. Oh yeah, you Rick, said. you want to do some drumming? <laughs> I'm just throwing you under the bus as quickly as possible. <laughs> I'd love to, but I, I should probably learn how to play it first. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, uh, Tyler learned on the stage, man. He's doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> He picked up a pair of drumsticks on, like, Saturday, and by Sunday he was on the stage. <laughs> I, I tinkered around with drums, but that was a long, a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I actually had a long conversation with uh, a, a couple of, of guys here about also getting out of the way, like we're talking about. And um, that 20, 80-20 rule, where 20% is doing most of the work, and... You, you kind of say, you know, 20%, stop doing the work. Because if you stop doing the work, it still has to get done. Mm-hmm. And that's where somebody else gets to feel the call to step in to do it. And if you're overworking yourself, you're burning yourself out. You're killing yourself to try to fulfill all this stuff. And there's several, there's several uh, ministry leaders here that I, I have said, you are stressed out. Stop doing so much. Let someone else. I can't. I just can't. It's you. You can and you, you should. You really <laughs> should. Let's let's step back and not pick that up. So, and it's uh, yeah. It's uh, it's one of those things where we we need to constantly work on that one because, like I said, I just found myself in the middle of it with the camera. You know. Go. Yeah, I can I can speak as someone who had for a while to fill like almost every leadership role in a church right as uh you know that it's kind of like please someone come help <laughs> but this it, this is important and until someone is ready to help i, I can't not do this thing right you know, it, it's it's kind of it's a weird sort of Dichotomy. Catch to yeah. dichotomy thing where you can't really, you know, it's like, I, hey, want, hey, I want to give this Don't to go you. making up words now. No, <laughs> I, I can't help it, man. <laughs> it's who I am. You know, it's like, I want to I wanna hand this off to, to someone who is better at it or more, like, you know, w- will handle it a little a little more correctly. Focused. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but that person isn't saying I want to do that. Yes, yeah. and and but this thing still needs to be done, and it's important that otherwise these people who are depending on this thing I'm doing, yeah, could fall away. You yeah. know what? Yeah. Like I, that's one. That's one of the reasons. Obviously, I would prefer to have a choir because that's my background. Um, well, but that's one of the reasons why. What? You want to lead a choir? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Invitations open, bro. <laughs> Don't spin that one out. There. I want to be in one. <laughs> It's good, good, it's good. But I, that's why I think one of the reasons why it was so important is because is like all these you know these people that supposedly want to get involved in worship it gives them uh, one a place. way to be involved uh, without because a lot of a lot of people want to be involved but they don't maybe necessarily want to want such a visible role you know yeah like to be honest with you I would much prefer to be in a choir than to be uh on the praise team because i i don't i don't necessarily want to be you know Up like there front and center, center. Yeah. yeah um uh not not to mention i mean to be quite frank it's i it's it's pressure yeah you know because you're one of four voices that may or may not be heard um <laughs> uh you know and but the point is is that the choir gives a, gives more people the a way that want to be involved to get involved right uh especially those that want to be involved without you know like having like i said such a such a, a visible you know role but still feel like they're contributing sure. to the ministry yeah that's why it was so nice when we had one yeah and i think that maybe the last time we had one 
it can we can choirs seem like such a, a archaic you know mm -hmm. uh, instrument but I mean they can be more modern yeah. but still be you know yeah there yeah I think I think for me there's a lot of things that you just said that that are m my makeup of I don't want to be on stage almost ever but I always want to be singing and praising with the group where I can be part of the praising to God group. And it's like the only place that you really can do that is in a choir or on a praise team. But you should be doing that in congregation and it should count as much. But it doesn't. It feels, it feels different. You mean it doesn't in the eyes of people? No, I mean, it. it, it I am not feeling myself be part of of the stage as much because oh. the matching of this the music the musicality of it is not as tight when i'm up on stage during practice that's one of my favorite praise times of a week for the praise team because you know me you've seen me you've seen me i when we're praise teaming i'm walking around and and praising god and just focusing on god and being part of the music mm -hmm. And when it comes Sunday, I'm doing the exact same thing, but also focusing on not allowing my introversion to affect other people seeing me walk around. Because if I walked around during service, it would, it would make some people not think that I'm focused on God. There's that whole, I was raised to stand a certain way and sing a certain way to perform a certain way. And I've got rid of a lot of that because there was definitely no hands up in the sky, no touching your heart, none of that. I have always felt uncomfortable doing that. But then again, I wasn't I wasn't raised in you know, to be in the church. I wasn't even saved until I was nineteen and I air quoted there because I think I did it for the wrong reasons and I'm I'm I've always struggled with, with Your salvation. You know, Right. I mean, I think at this point I am, you know, I believe what I believe. I just didn't go, I didn't have that aha, you know. That moment. Literally come to Jesus moment. Yeah. With, with me, it would be so strange for me to actually sing like I sing in praise team practice on stage during service. It would make it so that it was more uncomfortable to me to be free and open the way that I actually am during practice. I actually feel uncomfortable in practice when, when, uh, when, uh, wow, Leslie and I are practicing and I'm not standing there with her trying to help her harmonize with me because I'm not being part of the group, but I'm being part of the group more by not standing there in that little tight collective thing. It's like, that's where my music time is with God, is I'm singing with you. Justin walks over to me, he's singing next to me, and he loves corporally being next to you. And it actually kind of, okay, I've got to let go that I'm an introvert and I am singing and praising towards God because I love singing with my brother Justin. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a weird, this is the reality of where my musicality and my worship comes from. Now put me on stage, standing <laughs> uncomfortably, with a mic in front of a bunch of people and people coming to me and go, you don't like standing on stage. <laughs> if, if I could somehow be part of the group standing behind the stage and singing the exact same way that I do, that would be almost perfect for me. You know, like Justin goes, you want to sing that first part? You like solo kind of, I don't like solos, dude. I don't like anything having to not be corporately part of this group. And I think it would be kind of weird and confusing for people to see how I sing and praise team practice during service. What? Go ahead. I, I think know. they should. I know. <laughs> I, I know. I know. It's like one of those. Uh, all, all the things you're talking about is like I can understand and I can relate, but they all seem wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. You're, what you're I actually knew where you're going, and I, <laughs> I've been there too, going. Because that's why one of the reasons why Bryson is so, both enjoyable, and disruptive to certain people in the congregation mm. that's why the shoes off thing i love it i uh, i am an introvert mm -hmm. um which 
may come as a surprise. Uh, it probably shouldn't, but uh, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, the the most uncomfortable thing for me is is singing on a stage. Um, but you know, I I I did I led for yeah. two years at a church, and it's like every every at the end of every single service, guys, I I, I said, said the prayer. I put down my guitar. I just walked through the. It was a small church, so I walked down the center aisle, out the back door, and stood there breathing for, yes. <laughs> for about five minutes before I went back into the service to listen to the message. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was dreadfully uncomfortable, but you know, you just kind of bite the bullet and realize you're not doing it for yourself, and 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 carry on. You know, I, I'd have more hair if I hadn't been a worship leader. <laughs> <laughs> So, kind of, most of us being able to relate, because I'm also very, yeah. in incredibly introverted, um, it's still, I mean, it's it's an incredibly growing exper experience. Having been through it, I, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing you yeah. know, about it, because it, it is such an incredible experience, and it also kind of strengthens your faith, because you, you come to understand that <coughs> there's a... There's another power that is kind of driving the whole thing because I am, at best, a marginal guitarist. But for five years, you know, it was kind of like, this is what I want you to do, and yeah, you know, being driven to do it, yeah, and recognizing the, you know, what James is talking about in the book of James of, if you don't get that something's saying do something, maybe you should reevaluate whether or not you're really a follower of Christ. Yeah. And we, I, I like that for how much you can recognize in people of, I don't care about the recognition. As a matter of fact, I hate standing on stage, <laughs> yeah. but I want to do it. I want to do it. Uh, and I, I can credit it back to uh, Tommy Ryan, uh, uh, my youth pastor, choir director that I grew up with. He heard me singing in a hallway one week. I was the kid that was allowed to not actually be part of anything because I didn't want to be part of anything. And he heard me singing down a hallway one day and he goes, he goes to my dad and he says, do you mind if I basically take him by the scruff of the neck and make him do something? <laughs> and my dad said, yeah, do it. And then it was, you're now going to be the lead in this drama as a young kid. You're now going to sing the solos in this. You're now going to, it's like, I hate this. <laughs> you know, and it was, it was, it was hated and then it was i came to know the lord and it was like okay god yeah you you made it so that i could do this stuff i should do this stuff mm -hmm. oh my goodness i should do this stuff <laughs> and then uh what was it um pretty sure you were part of it for a, a drama that we did i can't remember who i was standing next to oh it was uh, isaac swick and isaac swick um said uh said are you okay are you okay and it was game time going on to my scene and i'm in the back doing my praise team practice pacing and he's like are, are you feeling sick i said i'm always sick before i go I like, what are you talking about <laughs> like anytime i do a drama it's the most hated thing for me ever you know i love doing it for doing it but i hate doing it doing it and uh, I got, got on stage, I got off stage, and he goes, are you going to be sick? I said, maybe. <laughs> you know, he's like, you're up here like every week. And that was when we were doing dramas, like every week, and we were doing praise team stuff every week. And he just didn't believe it. It was one of those bizarre, this is really you? I'm like, hell yeah. And then when Karen is doing a drama, it's, it's a nightmare. Because Karen is an extrovert. And she's backstage trying to talk to me. I'm like, I'm 100% focused on walking on the stage. you got to leave me alone. She's like, why? This is going to be awesome. This is going to be great. It's like, go away. Go away. You can I, never understand me. Go ahead. I could, I could just see you like, yeah, I might throw up. If I do, just go with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you, you're an extrovert, right? You, you, even though you don't like the, the spotlight for praise team, you're more so... You, you want to be in the choir and be out there in front of me. Even in the choir for me is... I, I, I like to be around people, and I, I don't like to say a lot, but when yeah. when it's time to turn it on, I, I can turn it on. I mean, I, I yeah. but I'm not like... Got it, got to do it. Like, yeah. 
I'm like I'm like Karen when it comes to like drama. Like you know, I'll be the guy that rolls around on the stairs and you know, <laughs> like uh, oh yeah, you know, like she's you know a crazy horse or whatever. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I loved that. Did you guys see that one? I don't know if you guys were here for that one. It was it was she was supposed to be the overly crazy, just out there to show everybody that she was more prayerful, more. Oh Jesus! Yeah, she, right? she had a bigger slice of that Holy Spirit pie. Yeah, and um, it was funny because the place was silent, but she did a great job of pulling off that person. Mm-hmm. And the whole point was is that person is an uncomfortable no, and it's like was was the drama good or bad for the people in the audience because <laughs> she pulled that off pretty solidly. All right, um, gotta go. All right. All right. Uh, mercy. Cheerful acts of compassion characterizing those with the gift of mercy. Persons with this gift aid the body by emphasizing, em, empathizing with hurting members. They keep the body healthy and unified by keeping others aware of the needs within the church. I'm terrible at this one as well. I don't empathize well with... Yeah. Giving members, uh, giving members with the gift of giving freely and joyfully to the work and mission of the body, cheerfulness and liberality are characteristic of individuals with this gift. Hospitality, those with the gift have the ability to make visitors, guests, and strangers feel at ease. They often use their homes to entertain guests. Persons with this gift in, 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 <laughs> integrate new members into the body. <laughs> that's, that's do first Peter. I'm right there. Uh, wow. I'm- are you what is so funny James. <laughs> for me hospitality are you kidding <laughs> you, you should know what the thing is uh, we've had that conversation before <laughs> he, he just left he should he, he would have been a witness to it mm-hmm. be hospitable to one another without grumbling <laughs> that's a pretty simple one yeah. um I, what's so funny for me and for people on the thing is yeah you can you can come to my house doesn't mean I want to spend any time with you. And that, you know, we've talked about that before. Of, uh, uh, Rick has come over with the family, and we went out to the, the, the grill pit out back, and we had the conversation afterwards, and I, I tried to explain it to him very clearly. I love you. I want to, I want to see you. Sometimes. <laughs> and, and hospitality for me is, uh, my mother-in-law is this lady. Th- this, this is her. Yesterday at the soccer fields, Little kids came around her like she was the Pied Piper because she's the lady there with that nice lady over there. Go talk to the nice lady. And you go to her house at, at, at Thanksgiving and there's 150 people there. And they're all like, you know, there's a literal barn dance, right? And it, it's kind of the, oh, well, such and such wanted to come over and she said that she wanted to have like a dance thing. So she just put that together and they're all here and, and they're like, this is maddening. I don't even. I don't even want to be there. And Karen knows that. And Karen wants to be there every time because, you know, that's their thing. That's how they feel. That's who that person is. Who's that person for us? You know, where where do we find that in the church? Do we have one of those in the class? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, right now, I think we're very, very similar introversion level people yeah. so i'm i'm not that person I, I often i often think that i want to have guests over and 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 all of you and everyone in here has probably crossed my mind to be invited to my home on multiple occasions <laughs> and eventually it's like i can't do that no i can't i can't i can't handle it and and, and when we finally invite someone some people over you know we have a we have a family over and 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 it's like you know i'm, I'm glad we did this but I'm really looking forward to when it's over. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for these people who I love to leave. <laughs> yes. uh, Everybody but, listening, we have a whole room full of these same people. <laughs> We're all the same with that. Um, that that does not mean Christians are that. That does not mean, you know, we, we need to get more people in this room that are not those people. Yeah, so we, we just ha- have uh, an um, unfortunate imbalance of... of uh, personalities. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, w- I would think that Tyler would be different from that when Tyler would be here. Um, yeah. And, you know, some of the other other gang members, gang members. Um, uh, but, yeah, th- there seems to be a, an ex- ex- excused number of we are the same introverted people. Um, man, I love it. I, I didn't even mean it to be this 
directly attacking my my innards of man. We need to reach out and get some other kind of people in the class. Um, God has gifted you with an expression of His Holy Spirit to support His vision and mission of the church. His worldwide vision to reach all people with the gospel of Christ as a servant. God desires that you know how His He has gifted you. This will lead you to where you would have you serve as part of your vision and mission of the church. And then we have the thing to fill out. So, um, fill it out. <laughs> well, you don't have to fill it out right now. Uh, that my, my concept was, we'll fill this thing out, and then we'll actually know where we're coming from. And actually, have you done one of these before? It's been a while. It's been probably five or six years. Yeah, but, it's yeah. been a while for me, too. And it's kind of that, we move. You know, we shift. Things change. And... Why don't we reevaluate more often and uh, see where we're coming from? So we'll do that one. Let's uh, let's go to the other sheet. We got like five minutes. Let's see. We've got yeah, literally like five minutes. And then here's the. Is this the same one? Nope, this is the other one. All right. So there's the spiritual growth assessment, which is the other sheet. Hey. Uh, good stuff. Your spiritual journey as a follower of Christ begins the moment you admitted personal sin and place your trust in Christ as Savior and Lord. From that point until death or the return of Christ, your life's call is to grow in Christ likeness. Jesus summarizes the discipleship call in Matthew 8 34. If anyone wants to be my follower, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Accomplishing such a challenging assignment requires growing in your understanding of what it means to be a Christian, expanding your personal knowledge of biblical truth, and applying daily what you learn. Through the presence of his indwelling spirit, God enables you to know, obey, and serve him. I think one of the, the biggest statements in that paragraph of just you know the person that wrote this document is daily. You know? I, I think uh, 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 Ben... Uh, a few years ago when he got up and he talked about camp it was I think it was just last year but he talked about camp because I think I think you actually you and I had a conversation after it occurred but um, people say well they come back from camp and they're all on fire for God and then why can't we get that to happen here in the church and you know and Ben said we get up and we pray and we open the Bible and then we go play and then we come back and we pray and we open the Bible every day for a week daily in the word daily focusing on god that's why that happens yeah. it's a practical we're doing it every day and when you're doing it every day five times in the day you remember what it is to be in the word and to daily walk and to and then you come back and you don't crack your bible for four months or, actually, Ben said, and then you come back and you do it once a day or twice a day for about a week, and then like once a day, and then once a week, and then you turn back into what you do. And I don't crack my Bible like I should. I don't get into it as much as I should. What's funny is, is I think modern worship songs have become a hindrance to me because I can listen to them. Instead of doing what I'm supposed to do, which is daily actually be in the Word and focus. You know, we replace things that we're told to do with one little thing because it's easier and convenient. If you don't do the work, you don't get the benefit. And it's a daily process. And I know for me, I ain't doing it right. Um, I, I, I think, I know that uh, Eli, Justin's son, is doing it more right than I am. <laughs> He's daily in the Word. You know? Uh, I just had uh, Jessica Guidi telling me that it annoys her sometimes because he's correcting her on where verses are and what they say. <laughs> and it's like, and I should be studying, but at the same time, kid, respect your elders. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. You know, because, because no, no, that was sudden such. In sudden such, it's like, wow. Now, imagine if we were all focusing and doing those things. I, I can barely convince myself to, to, to really, what's the word, 
make it go into my heart when I'm reading it. Blah, 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 blah. When I do the 365-day Bible thing, it's like blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Words, words, words. How long is this? Yeah. <laughs> God expects his children to grow spiritually and his word encourages personal examination as an element of growth. Let us search out and examine our ways. Lamentation 340. Know the Lord of hosts says this. Think carefully about your ways. Haggai 1, 5. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my concerns. See if there is any offensive way in me. Lead me in the everlasting way. Psalm 139, 23 to 24. But each person should examine his own work, and then he will have a reason for boasting in himself, himself alone, and not in respect to someone else. Galatians 6, 4. Pay careful attention, then, to how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise. Ephesians 5, 15. This assessment process can help you complete an examination and careful search of your spiritual growth. Follow these simple steps to complete the process. Complete the spiritual growth assessment. The assess uh, assessment helps you think carefully about your spiritual development, relate to six specific spiritual disciplines, all the stuff that we're going to do with the test. Draw and evaluate your discipleship wheel. And I think it's in here. Yeah, it's in here. Um, contribute copies of the spiritual growth ob observation response to at least three people. Follow the instructions before completing a personal growth plan. Begin working on a personal growth plan. Uh, the annual spiritual growth work plan worksheet helps you formulate an intentional plan for growth. Use recommended actions for spiritual growth guide to discover suggestions for your actions to include in your plan. So this is really a step-by-step -step way to get to where you should be going and what you think you should uh, evaluate yourself under. So it's a it's a nice treaty, and hopefully um, we'll all fill it out and actually get it done and put it together. Thanks for joining us again as we continue our study with James Luce and the Men's Ministry at Glenville Church. Feel free to join us as well on Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. We'd love to have you. If you'd like to check out some other teachings here on the YouTube channel for Glenville Teachings, we have Brenda Lane, Bruce Thomas, and several other teachers. So look for some new teachings coming your way and subscribe to our channel. May the Lord bless you and keep you as you continue to grow in His grace.